Hi everyone, welcome to today's Nursing Rapid Review with Picmonic. Today we are covering electrolyte lab values, but specifically potassium. So we're going to cover the lab value of potassium, we're going to cover hyperkalemia and hypokalemia, which are both when there is too much pota potassium and too little potassium. Before we get started, let's just go over what Picmonic is very quickly. So at Picmonic, we take all the hard to remember information in nursing school and turn it into fun pictures and characters and stories so that you can remember it very quickly when you need to. So let's go into the first question that we have here. The nurse is assessing the lab values of a 70 year old female patient who has just returned to the unit after a knee replacement surgery. Which of the following lab values would the nurse be concerned with? So we have our answer options here. The first one is sodium at 145 milliequivalent per liter. Two is potassium at 2.8 milliequivalent per liter. Three is phosphorus at 3.0 milliequivalent per liter. And four is magnesium at 1.3 milliequivalent per liter. So on this question, it's basically just asking us if we know the lab value, the normal lab value range of any of these electrolytes. And so what we have to find is very simple, is find the one that is abnormal. So it's a basic recall question. And luckily, luckily for us, we can jump into the potassium lab value of Picmonic right here. So we do have a range of Picmonics on the different lab values. At this point, you would just want to memorize the standard um, normal ranges. And so there are the different lab values we have, but just for time's sake, let's jump into the potassium lab value and go over the characters there. Potassium's normal lab value range can be remembered by the giant banana, who happens to be a cannibal, catching a banana tossed to it from the banana tree. The normal range for serum potassium levels is 3.5 to 5.0 milliequivalents per liter. The three tree with 0.5 hand tossing a banana to the five hand, 3.5 to five. So when we jump into the potassium lab value picmonic, you're gonna see several things. So you're gonna see a main image in the middle of the picmonic, and then on the left hand side, you're gonna see a fact list. And this is the same with every picmonic that you are going to see in the entire library. So the uh, fact list on the left are the high yields facts, the information that you need to be aware of for the specific topic that you're looking on. So when I look at the left hand side here, I see potassium lab value and each of the facts is going to correspond with a character in the main image. So now we see that potassium is going to be the banana. So anytime you see a banana in the entire Picmonic library, that's going to trigger you to remember that it's whatever we're talking about is going to have to do with potassium. So specifically this one, when we click on the fact, you're going to get um, a definition and you're going to see the, um, the lab value range. So this one is 3.5 to 5.0 milli equivalent per liter. You're going to remember that with the three tree and the 0.5 hand to the five hand. So that's how you're going to paint this whole image in your head and that's how you're going to memorize the lab value for potassium. You're going to do the same thing with sodium, for chloride, for phosphorus, for all of the other electrolyte lab values. And then you can go ahead and quiz yourself on them to make sure that you really have them down. So now let's jump back in to our question. So now when we jump back to the question, we can answer this properly. Looking at answer option number two, potassium 2.8 milliequivalents per liter, because remember the question is asking us which of the following lab values would the nurse be concerned with? Because we memorize the normal range for potassium, um, we're going to see that the 2.8 is outside of the normal range. So that's going to be an issue. That is going to be the correct answer. We're going to be concerned with that uh, lab value, with that answer option being the correct one, because it's 2.8 milliequivalent per liter. That makes that patient hypokalemic. So now we're going to talk about hyper and hypokalemia, okay? So let us go into the next question. The nurse gets a call from the cardiac monitoring room about her 56-year-old patient, Joe Banana. The monitor text states that he has an ECG abnormality. The nurse received a call earlier stating that Joe's serum potassium level was 2.8 milliequivalents per liter. Remember, that was from the previous question. What ECG abnormality was likely reported by the monitor tech? 
Now we have answer options. One, peaked T waves. We have two, shortened QT. Three, prolonged QT. Four, shortened PR interval. And five, U wave. So how are we going to answer this? Let's jump into our hypokalemia pycmonic. Because remember, now we are very aware that the patient is hypokalemic. Let's find out a little bit about what the signs and symptoms are, specifically about the ECG abnormalities with hypokalemia. So let's jump into the hypokalemia pycmonic right now. We can remember the assessment, interventions, and considerations of hypokalemia by this scene of the hippo banana who got stopped at the border and after a failed bribery attempt was arrested and tortured. Hypokalemia is defined as a serum potassium of less than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter, represented here by the less than 3 tree pointing to the 0.5 hand, which can lead to a variety of clinical manifestations. In the setting of severe potassium deficit with values less than 2.5 milliequivalents per liter, muscle weakness can result often exhibiting a pattern affecting the lower extremities first with progression to the trunk and upper extremities, shown here by the weak drooping muscle. Low potassium can also lead to a variety of arrhythmias and other EKG changes, depicted by the broken arrhythmia drum, including flattening or inversion of the T-wave and ST depression. Additionally, hypokalemic patients may display U-waves, shown in this pygmonic as the U-wave which results from prolonged repolarization of ventricular Purkinje fibers. Insufficient potassium may also cause gastrointestinal GI, manifestations such as an ileus, represented by the eels, which is secondary to slowed motility and presents clinically with nausea, vomiting, and abdominal distension. When assessing deep tendon reflexes, patients with diminished levels of potassium can exhibit hyporeflexia, decreased and weak reflex responses, that are seen here as the hippo reflex hammer related to skeletal muscle dysfunction from this electrolyte imbalance. Severe hypokalemia may even result in flaccid paralysis. Hypokalemia can be treated by infusing IV potassium salts at 5 to 10 milliequivalents per hour, shown as the IV banana infuser with the 5 hand to the 10 tin. However, several caveats exist regarding IV administration of potassium. In particular, never push IV potassium since rapid infusion can cause cardiac arrest. Always dilute potassium preparations to at least 1 milliequivalent per 10 milliliter concentration and do not exceed 20 milliequivalents per hour during infusion because IV potassium is necrotic to veins at rising concentrations. Additionally, potassium can be given orally but should be given with food to reduce GI irritation, pictured here as the hippo orally eating food. Finally, it is important to monitor the respiratory status of severely hypokalemic patients, recalled here by the lungs monitor, since the associated muscle weakness may lead to respiratory acidosis and further respiratory compromise if unaddressed. So, to recap, remember that hypokalemia is defined by a serum potassium of less than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter and causes muscle weakness, arrhythmias, U-waves, GI abnormalities including ileus formation, and hyperreflexia. Interventions include infusing potassium at 5 to 10 milliequivalents per hour with specific precautions due to its delicate infusion restrictions or giving oral supplementation with food to avoid GI irritation. Lastly, Always remember to monitor respiratory status in hypokalemic patients. Okay, so again, when we jump into the hypokalemia pycmonic, just like every other pycmonic, we're going to have a main image in the center of the pycmonic with a bunch of characters. And then on the left-hand side, we're going to get the important facts that have to do with this topic. Each topic, again, or sorry, each fact, again, is going to correspond with a character in the main image. So we see our banana, but this time it's with a hippo which is going to be um, representing hypokalemia. Anytime you see a hippo banana in the Pycmonic Library, you're always gonna think hypokalemia. Then we're gonna scroll down here again, see assessment findings. So again, less than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter. We're gonna see different things like muscle weakness, arrhythmias, and oh, what's that U wave is a big, big um, high yield fact that you need to be aware of when it comes to hypokalemia and ECGs. So a prominent U wave is going to be seen on ECG due to prolonged repolarization of ventricle Purkinje fibers. 
So that's a definition right in the fact there. You can read more about it. And the other thing here too is we want to look at the different signs and symptoms, hyperreflexia, interventions. Um, we're going to see nursing considerations. But remember the U-wave is a very, very important NCLEX hot topic that you need to be remembering when it comes to hypokalemia. So let's go back into the picmonic now, or sorry, back into the question and see these answer options again. And notice that U-wave is at the bottom, so that's going to be our answer. What ECG abnormality was likely reported by the monitor tech? A U-wave. So moving on, let's now go do one more. Um, a 55-year-old male patient is experiencing abdominal cramps, muscle weakness, and diarrhea. After lab results reveal his serum potassium level at 7.1 milliequivalent per liter, remember that is outside of the normal range because we remember from the first picmonic what the normal range is, um, and that is way above. So what would the nurse expect to happen next? Now because we know this is outside of the normal range, it is, we know, hyperkalemia. So hyperkalemia is an increase in potassium. So let's look at our answer options here. And number one, administer glucose and insulin infusion. Number two, administer a bolus of potassium. Number three, administer oral pot potassium. Number four, have the patient ambulate for 30 minutes and reassess. So there's something else I wanna point out here. The, the sentence, what would the nurse expect to happen next? So. This is an intervention type question. When we look at the different kinds of, of questions that were being asked on nursing exams, a lot of times they're asking you about the nursing process. So here we've already done basically an assessment. We've collected data, both objective and subjective, about the patient. The re lab results reveal that he is hyperkalemic. So what would the nurse expect to happen next? What is the intervention that we're looking for next? Because all of these answer options are interventions. So let's look at the proper intervention that comes with hyperkalemia by jumping into the hyperkalemia picmonic. Recall hyperkalemia as the story about the hiker banana who was an international banana smuggler who was determined to find a way to make it to his vacation where he could ride the waves. Hyperkalemia is defined by a serum potassium level greater than 5, shown by the greater than 5 hand scale which saw that the hiker's backpack had way too many bananas. Hyperkalemia can manifest as abdominal cramps, shown as the abs man put in clamps by the hiker who fed him too many bananas. And muscle weakness can also occur, the weak, drooping muscles of the man. Diarrhea, the toilet, and arrhythmias can occur, the broken arrhythmia drum the hiker stepped on. More specifically, tall peaked T waves can be seen on the EKG, the tall Mr. T peaked wave poster of a vacation destination. Interventions for hyperkalemia include infusion of glucose and insulin, infusing the glue bottle with an insect syringe, as well as diuretics to reduce potassium, the dye rocket. k the kayak he plans to land on, helps to excrete potassium via defecation. Finally, prevention education of hyperkalemia should take place, shown by the prevention educator. So in quick review, hyperkalemia occurs when serum potassium is greater than 5 and leads to abdominal cramps, muscle weakness, and diarrhea. Furthermore, arrhythmias may occur and EKG findings such as tall peak T waves may occur. Interventions include infusion of glucose and insulin, diuretics, k and prevention education. So jumping into the hyperkalemia picmonic, we can see that we have another character standing for hyperkalemia, again with a banana, but this time it is a hiker. So anytime you see a hiker banana, that is going to represent to you that we are talking about hyperkalemia. And again, we have a whole scene here, a whole different story. And when you scroll down, you can see different assessment findings, which again, muscle cramps, weakness, diarrhea, things that were already mentioned in the question, um, arrhythmia. But this time, look, we see tall peaked T waves, which is something to point out. So remember that the hypokalemia has U waves, while hyperkalemia has tall peaked T waves. But the question was asking us about an intervention. So let's scroll down to interventions. And again, these all these interventions are here. And, and I see all these interventions are listed here. And they each have a character to represent that specific intervention. Now we see diuretics. 
We see prevention education. Now let's look at number seven, infusion of glucose and insulin. So patients with hyperkalemia are given infusions of glucose and insulin to drive potassium into the cell. That's something you wanna remember. And this is a very important nursing intervention that you wanna remember for your NCLEX. And we represent that here with infusing, the character that's infusing the glue bottle and insect syringe right at the bottom here. So you're gonna paint this whole scene in your head once you memorize this and you're gonna quiz yourself on it. So that is the answer. When we jump back into our original question, we see the answer options again. We have one administered glucose and insulin, uh, one, we have an administered glucose and insulin infusion. All of these other answer options are incorrect. And what we just saw from the Picmonic, we saw the reason behind that. So the answer is going to be number one. So just wrapping back to just some strategies. Always remember when you're answering these NCLEX questions to use ADPI, which is the nursing process standing for assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. So remember that last question was an intervention question where the one before that was an assessment question. So we're following what the, I have dogs everywhere. <laughs> so we're following the uh, nursing process to understand what the question stem is asking us to identify and what the options are to reflect that. Just like the second one was an intervention question we had an intervention answer option, and the first one was an assessment question, and we had an assessment answer option. So going back to the basics, when you start getting nervous and you start just kind of freaking out and not knowing what to do, just remember some really easy steps when going about these NCLEX questions. Ask yourself what the question is asking you, read the entire question, and reread it so you can really narrow the focus, and then just look at some strategic words to help you understand what the question is asking you. And don't forget to check out our other electrolyte lab value, Picmonics, because we just covered potassium today, but we have a whole bunch of other ones there that you can really memorize and get down so you can go into your exam stress-free and have fun while doing it. So that is all we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Go and sign up and get a free account at pigmonic.com. And until next time, good luck studying. Goodbye. Bye.